G'day guys, Staff Sarge, back at Solaris. That's right, we're going to be finishing off all of the uh, all the gladiator combat. As you see, since we've done the light and medium circuits, we're now a regular. But in order to get to the next stage, we're going to have to engage in the heavy matches. So heavy matches are interesting. There's a lot more firepower. There's actually uh, a few more mechs on the field, I believe, compared to the medium circuit. So what ends up happening is that it's a lot more brutal. But... It falls down a little bit because of the number of um, aces that appear. There are a lot of pilots who have customized loadout, and because they're named aces, they're actually really, really goddamn deadly. So what we're going to roll in, first of all, is, as per usual, the jungle, with um, the first Solaris mech I got recommended, which is the Novacat the Insult. It's got a good amount of speed, it's got a good amount of heat sinks, and all of the small lasers, and a pair of LRM-10s. Um, I did have a look at the way the guy rigged it out himself. It's a little bit different. Um, I didn't get exactly the same as you rigged it out, but should still be pretty common and effective. So be like to probe to help with the um, the lock-ons. It's Lunar Alliance paint scheme because what's bigger insult than being knocked out by a Steiner? <laughs> or rather a Steiner that's not riding in an assault mech. From the heart of Cathay, this is Duncan Fisher. Oh, I missed the that. The jungle is filled with people waiting to see the next heavy match of the season. If you ask any of them, they'll say the heavy mix are where it's at. The action has been intense these last few weeks, as many pilots are going above and beyond to win. The jungle is a tough arena for heavies, because it's harder to get around. But that'll just make a better game for us. As you know, this heavy season has been one of Steiner domination. They have four heavy pilots who have been destroying all who face them. The events outside of Solaris seem to really be pushing them to go that extra mile on the battlefield. There's a lot of energy in the air, and it looks like we're going to have a great game today. I'm pretty sure that's one of the longest Duncan Fisher spiels you'll hear. It's Solaris time! And right off the bat, we have... Okay, as you can see, there's... Okay, Ellie Neals, there's, um... There's Cheng, there's Terence Munson. There's like five aces. All those five mechs on the radar screen, all of them are aces. And one of them is the annoying bitch who I keep on bitching about in the thread. I think everyone else bitches about in the thread as well. Miria Stewart is one of Liao's own. In a Fuck. controversial move, he decided not to compete in the medium that's circuit. Why. This is his second that's season, and die. some think he could use some more seasoning in the lighter circuits. I think he has a lot of promise, but he's pushing himself too hard. It's hard not to like the guy, though. He's honorable and doesn't seem to take his sudden stardom seriously. I hear he still eats lunch at a little dive in downtown Cathay. I don't think this is going to be his year to make the championship, but when he makes it, I'll sure wish him well. I love a good heavy mech match. You have enough firepower to really see some fireworks, but you have enough speed that you don't wind up with a turret match. Heavy matches also have a lot of your proven warriors trying to work their way into the championship. So you have pilots who appeal to the working man, people who have paid their dues and are waiting for a shot at the big time. All right, so Chang, I didn't get a good look Looks at what Looks like Ellie we Neals. have some cat and mouse going on yeah. down there. Sometimes a pilot gets rattled, and in the heat of the moment, the fight or flight reflex goes the wrong way. A lot of pilots look down on that, but I'm more sympathetic. If everything seems to be going bad fast, even the best pilots can get rattled. Sometimes there's a fine line between predator and prey. So Ellie Neals. I can't remember what her loadout heavy was, season but... has been kind of one-sided. Steiner pilots have definitely been avoiding each other down there. Hey, that's nothing new. Pilots tend to have their own agendas, and on some of those agendas is not... Now, this is where it starts to get interesting. Three pilots are left. It all comes down to this. Down and dirty, and all bets are off. Do I get to say something now? Thank you. Alright, so yeah, Duncan Fisher, as per usual, talks a lot. Especially because the amount of the sheer amount of firepower and the fact that the mechs will gang up on each other it means that he will often go on about you know kills and such for quite a while. Uh, so Ellie Neals with PPCs, Feng Chang. We'll get a better look at her loadout in, when we get to the Colosseum. I will save my bitch fest for when we get there. It's uh, it's annoying. We have our winner. That's it, Solaris fans. We have our winner. It's Spectre, a rookie pilot showing the big boys just exactly how this game is played. There were some good fights out there today, but the Merc rookie phenomenon has stormed the jungle again. 
Here's to you, Spectre. This is Duncan Fisher signing off. So the insult, um, almost like cruising around on easy mode. I mean, so many small lasers with such a high fire rate works fantastic. Didn't even need to worry about heat. And because we've actually gone into heavy, we're now veteran. So the great news about the heavy circuit is the fact that you make a lot of money. I mean, you know, two and a half million prize money. Hopefully your mech survives so that way you don't have to repair it constantly. Uh, so, what was next? Ah, yeah, the uh, the factory. So we're going with the Argus Death From Above-ish. Uh, no speed, a fair few heat sinks, but even so heat efficiency isn't all that good. Why is that? Long Tom. Yep, first showing of the Long Tom in... Have I used... No, I haven't. Um... The long tom is an interesting weapon. It takes a lot to get used to because of the fact that it has a ballistic arc. But once you do manage to get it nailed down, it is fantastic. The only issues you have to contend with is the fact that it's so heavy you don't get any backup weapons. As you see, about pulse lasers and, um, and street caster arms for backup. Uh, you don't get many backup weapons, you don't get much ammunition, and it generates a lot of heat. When you're firing a heavy house, it's not like a gauss rifle with magnets. It's actually, you know, a chemical propellant howitzer. So... All of the heat. You know what time it is, Solaris fans? Factory time! Duncan Fisher here. It's a fine day in Montenegro, as long as you stay clear of the arena. People are piled in to see the latest match of the heavy season. We have some great mech action in store today. It is Solaris time, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so let's see if I can get this lined up. Like I said, it takes a while to get the arc just right. I think I nailed Enemy it. Detected. I think I managed Enemy to get detected. it just there. This is the big league, rookie. I'll watch your back this round if you watch mine. If we're the only ones left, then we can settle who's better. Deal? The competition is pretty fierce tonight, but one of the hopefuls is rookie Spectre. Sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. That guy is out of here. It's been a while since I've had a, uh, a new card actually say, hey, let's be allies, and then he is the explodes. It's looking like we have a good game going on. In heavy mech matches, you really see the full gamut of the heavy weapons. You have your auto cannons, PPCs, lasers, and Gauss rifles. I never get tired of watching a Gauss rifle slug launch. Those things pack a heck of a punch. Some media matches manage to pack a few of those bad boys. He showed a lot of patience and carefully lined up the shot. A lot of times, that's the way you gotta play it. He's one step closer to victory. I'll be honest, this uh, match I had to do a few times because of the fact that you see the arm that's blinking red? That's where my long tom is. That, um, that went boom a few times, which is unfortunate. Where'd that mech go? Oh, I missed anyway. So it's nice to see that I actually had a pilot who decided to, um, to do a ceasefire. I mean, it's been a fa fair while. They do happen on occasion, but for some reason during this playthrough, it's been. Looks like Spectre wants to take first today. He's just nailed his second pilot for the match. It's been extremely, you know, few and far between. Now, there goes my streakers. Nah. Two heavy contenders are Ellie Niels and Nako Toyuma. These Steiner powerhouses have seemed unstoppable. Ellie has been getting a lot of the spotlight, and I've heard a tasty rumor that Nako is none too pleased. Just between you and me, Solaris fan, I think that Nako is the better pilot. He's deadly efficient and a lot more consistent. I think Ellie has had a bit of a lucky streak. But Nako is the real deal, and he just seems to be getting better. I'm not too sure if the water actually stops the uh, the explosion. As you can see, there wasn't the effect of the uh, the shockwave from it, but it still seemed to do a little bit of damage, so I'm not too sure. But it doesn't matter if you get a direct hit, if you are able to get a direct hit. Now that failed just then. So yeah, ideally you want to try to aim right at the enemy mech's feet. I don't want to aim for that because the travel time and the fact that I get beam mounted in the arm on we the have Argus a especially. Of real from Merc Jack to Solaris Jack. This Spectre is showing everyone how to take care of business. Oh fuck. Three kills on the board and maybe some more to come. Okay, this is a, this is one of the few um, non-named pilots. He's, but he's, he's just a regular dragon. But but even so, oh, it's not a regular dragon. Can't be because it's got a heavy gauss. I'm not too sure if my long tom is actually doing damage. Oh wait, it did damage that time. Oh, just to be safe, I'll get a bit of distance. Try and lure him into a kill zone. I mean, if I take one more hit to the arm, then I'm fucked. And then potentially one more hit to the torso. 
So the main thing about fighting with the long time is, aside from the accuracy, is the fact that you cannot get up close and personal with the enemy, because if you hit the ground near them, then chances are you're going to be in the blast area too. If you accidentally hit them when you're at point blank range, yeah, you'll fuck them up, but um, you'll also fuck yourself up real damn fast. It's a little bit of getting used, especially because I'm used to using um, LBX-20s, that was my personal favourite of all the weapons. So I'm used to getting up close and personal and just wailing on mechs. Warning. Heat as you can see, long time to generate a lot of heat. I'm firing it almost as fast as I can along with those pulse lasers and... Kapow! BAM! Wins again. That's how we... <laughs> um...